pitch and start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of hell. Too sweet to be sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn! Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley, and it's just me right now. So welcome back. Uh, it's been about six months since we last posted an episode. The last episode we posted was March 24th, and uh, so I guess we should probably explain ourselves a little bit. Basically, if you've been listening to the show, you'll recall that at the beginning of every episode, we used to hear this. Westcast. That's a little bumper for the network that we were on. Uh, it was called Westcast, and uh, it's not happening anymore. It uh, kind of fell apart, and so we lost access to our studio and to all of our equipment. So that's what happened. That's why we haven't been on the air since March 24th. Uh, I've been slowly acquiring all of the necessary equipment to continue this podcast because I love it more than pretty much everything else. Uh, so I now have all of the equipment we used to have. So we shouldn't have any loss of quality. We should be able to pretty much continue unabated. So we had a little six month hiatus to get our, uh, to get our shit together. But now that we've got it together, we're very excited to be bringing you guys some new episodes. So, uh, you know, if you're not already, uh, following us on Twitter, we're at the goods pod. We're on facebook.com slash the goods pod, uh, rate and subscribe, you know, give us the five star rating. We love that. We need that, especially after taking a six month hiatus, you know, it's, uh, yeah, people are starting to forget. So I think, uh, I think as Snoop Dogg said in the, at the beginning of the chronic, it's time motherfuckers knew. So there you go. Uh, this episode, uh, we've actually been just kind of sitting on this episode uh, because essentially we kind of knew the shit had hit the fan with West Cass. And by the way, n- no one to blame for that. You know, it's fine. No hard feelings. It was great. They were nice enough to host the show on their network for as long as they did. And uh, we're nothing but grateful to the West Cass people. So uh, there you go. So uh, RIP West Cast. But uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, because uh, we knew that we were kind of not going to have a new episode for a while. We decided to just kind of sit on this one because I did really, really enjoy uh, talking to my friend Scott Howard, uh, who is our guest for today. Scott Howard, I met in Auburn, Alabama, back when I still lived there, and I was hosting the Bellwether Variety Show at the Big Blue Bagel in downtown Auburn. Uh, Scott was uh, nice enough to come on that show, and now he lives in Los Angeles, and uh, he's a great friend. And he's funny as hell. So you'll hear him in just a moment. But before we hear Scott's episode, there's actually a piece of audio that we have been sitting on since Christmas. So we've had this uh, had this ready to go for a while. Uh, And so I just figured I would put it on here at the beginning of the episode because it's short and it's hilarious. It's my friend Joe Rains. Uh, We run a show together along with our friend Wes Van Horn. The last Saturday of every month in downtown Los Angeles, it's a show called Yellow Hammered. So if you're in L.A. on the last Saturday of the month, come see us because it's a lot of fun. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash yellow hammered comedy. This is Joe Rains. Joe Rains is a hilarious comedian, and he got his start uh, doing a lot of very, very terrible gigs on the road. So uh, these are just a couple of uh, Joe's stories. And uh, then we're going to roll right into Scott Howard's episode of the goods from the woods. So, again, thank you guys so much for uh, click and subscribe. Thank you for downloading the episode. Thank you for listening. Uh, and we're really happy to be back. So here's uh, Joe Rains telling some shitty road stories. Uh, yeah, so it's been, been about a year since we had Joe on the podcast. And the last time we just talked about uh, getting arrested a bunch. Has it really been that? a year? It's been a year, yeah. He, Damn, he was also time go, Joe? He was also on our uh, on our Christmas episode, too. So That's this, right. And uh, since then, I know Joe's been <laughs> wanting to come on and talk about some hellacious road gigs. So we'll, we'll just call these... Uh, uh, Take us to hell, Joe. Yeah. Take us to hell, Joe. <laughs> that sounds like the beginning of a, uh, a wonderful amusement park ride that uh-huh. I'm in charge of. Yeah. Take us to hell, Joe. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the House of Horrors. House of Horrors. <laughs> Don't go into the basement. Well, so so uh, these would all been uh, with you opening for Jared Harris back yeah. in the day, right? When I first started doing comedy, everybody was pretty awful to me except for uh, Jared Harris out of Atlanta. He's like one of the nicest people I've ever met. When I first... At Biscuit Boner on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he's a super funny guy. He's a really nice guy. He was really nice to me when I first started. And he was like, hey, I want you to open for me on the road. 
And I, at the time, I was like, fuck, yeah, road gigs, killing it, crushing it. I'm already famous. Yeah. And uh, so I went on the road with them. And what I didn't realize is the guy who was booking Jared's gigs at that time was, like, a fucking lunatic. <laughs> and so we would just have all these insane gigs. Like, uh, one of the worst gigs I've ever been to in my entire life uh, was in Paducah, Kentucky, uh, uh, where the meth is made, and they, uh, they, it was first of all the town is exactly like what you would think it is, like Paducah, Kentucky. Whatever pops in your head, that's it. Yeah, uh, they had like one factory, and everybody worked on some river, and it was just fucking awful and terrifying. And we showed up to this club called Fr- uh, called uh, Fire and Ice in Microsoft Word Art uh, on as their sign. And when we got there, their doorman was ninety years old and wouldn't let us in without our IDs. And so we had to all have our IDs. We get in there, and we go to bartender, and we're like, we're doing the comedy tonight. And she's like, what comedy? And I was like, right away, you're like, well, that's the beginning of any wonderful night when the the, the place is not aware you're even having a show. <laughs> so we get there. We're like, we're at a comedy. She's like, well, let me call the owner. And we're like, yeah, call the owner. And she's like, all right, well, wait. All right, go ahead and do your comedy. And we're like, do you have, like, an audience or a speaker or a microphone? No. <laughs> So like, there's no speaker microphone. Well, we can get one from the club next door. She owns that too. And like, you mean the the strip club under the bridge? And she's like, yeah, the Froggers. And we're like, Froggers, the strip club under a bridge across the street. Awesome. Well, it should, it's fitting. Well, across the Froggers the street, should be yeah. across the street. You gotta be careful crossing that street, Joe. <laughs> it's difficult. And you gotta jump over them alligators so when you get to the other end. It they gets get harder spe- as the day goes a, along. They get a speaker. And you hear Yankee Doodle while you cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the screams. Uh, we, we're getting the show started there, and this like guy who's like, I'm the light man. I'm like, what do you do? No, I'm, I'm the light man. That's your entire job? for this bar is you do the lights for the shows that you don't even know are happening <laughs> yeah that's my job what kind of jail do you want and we're like what the fuck is this guy talking about so he puts a spotlight on us for the whole show from the side so half of your face was like sweaty and lit the fuck <laughs> up and the other half was pitch black like meet the Beatles. yeah exactly <laughs> so you're up there doing your set you can, the whole room's dark except for the spotlight on half your face and i'm doing my set and there's like this little tiny person in the back i thought it was a little girl and I, she kept he- heckling me and um i was like why is this little girl at a bar on a thursday night at like 11 o'clock for one two why is she giving me such shit and three like she why is her voice so crazy she, like what she kept yelling was how big's your cock how big's your cock how big's your cock and i was like why is this girl's voice so fucked why up just tell her 10 inches and shut her up and so, like, well, I mean, I was, like, just started, like, I was, like, what, a year in? So I okay, didn't, I didn't, six, I didn't even know how to handle hecklers at that point, because yeah. I was, like, an open mic comic. I didn't even know hecklers were a thing, really. So, like, I just was trying to think of stupid jokes uh, to get her off of me, and she wouldn't. And then I finally realized it was a, a, a midget, a dwarf, like a short person. Yeah. And I was, like, well, this is, I guess this is neat. Uh, a midget's heckling me. And then I got a good look at her, and I realized she was a midget stripper from Froggers. <laughs> she was the one who brought the microphone. So she's a... <laughs> midget stripper from froggers heckling me how big's your cock for 15 minutes straight <laughs> so finally i got really pissed off uh and to start going off on her like being really mean and the whole place went silent <laughs> Because if it's a little known fact, like if there's like a midget stripper in a, in a small town, you don't fucking mess with her because she's like the patron saint she's of like that the little town, town mascot. Yeah, she's like the most popular person in town. Yeah. Why? Well, they got to have somebody to stand on top of the fountain and spit yeah. water. <laughs> they like, well, you got to, everybody needs, you know. <laughs> she's like, you know, uh, she's a little, you know, panache for the city. She's like, a, she's I love like, you, yeah. Rivers. I, <laughs> She's famous. So I got I got really quiet and I got scared and then I said like just jokingly I was like anybody got a long rope? And uh then it got silent and a guy in the back leans forward on his chair and goes, Nah, but we could find one, funny boy. <laughs> And then I immediately was like, all right, thank you. That's been my time. Your next comedian, Jared Harris, everybody. And then went straight to the Honda Civic and hid under a blanket in the back seat for the rest of the show. <laughs> St. Petersburg, Russia, St. Petersburg, West Virginia, or somewhere near the capital of West Virginia, I think it was. This is club in the middle of uh, fucking nowhere. I actually got lost for an hour in the Daniel Boone National Forest on the way to this gig. <laughs> Little known fact, you're not actually lost in a Daniel Boone forest. It's just that fucking big. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
So I'm on the way to the gig. I finally get Daniel there. Daniel Bone would like it that way. I got there, and <laughs> <laughs> I approve of this. Uh, like the club, it's like the club itself was like a a club club that turned into a comedy club, and then after that turned into a dance club, and it's filled with crazy Kentucky and Kentucky people because it's on the border. So like we get to the show, and like even before the show starts, you can hear people going "fucking Kentucky." Woo! <laughs> and we're just like, oh, fuck. just because they're in West Virginia, they have to do that. I don't know. <laughs> and so, like, they're being crazy, and um, we do our sets, and then, like, as soon as the the headlining comedian like says thank you, thank you, like the lights cut the fuck off, the dance floor lights up with like the the glowing thing lights up, yeah. And then for like two hours straight, they go, they play that pussy control, pussy control, oh Prince. I guess I don't know, and then so the, 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 the club guys like, "Hey, can you hang out after the show for a while?" And I'm like, oh, "I don't want to do this," but you know, Jared's uh, at that point was you know booking gigs off of this, and so I had just started. I didn't realize you know that's how you keep going places is you do whatever the guy wants you to yeah. so you can come back. So I have to, we have to hang there. Jared's got a camera out, and so he just starts filming all these these people from Kentucky with his camera. And something happens when you put a camera in front of hillbillies that they all have to be on the camera. So we're yeah. getting mom by hillbilly people just screaming into the camera for I shit you not to like three in the morning just fuck it Kentucky Woo! <laughs> like making out with strangers pulling their tits out uh, these two uh, this sounds pretty good <laughs> yeah but these as you don't understand like this well like, I know the fucking Kentucky is annoying but I mean there's titties and there's prints just madness. and like this guy takes us to his car to smoke weed to smoke us out and like as soon as we this get to, still sounds good <laughs> I'm getting like as soon as the weed comes out uh, he like gets a text message. He's like, I gotta go. I just, my friend just told me the police are after me. So he like books the fuck out of there. And then, so we're like, did we almost just get arrested? Let's go back in. And then these two liquor salesmen started pan- like just giving us free liquor all night. And we're like, well, these are the nicest guys ever. <laughs> then they take us to their hotel room and start smoking us out. And like, then we start noticing I'm on a bed sitting next to one guy. He's on the other bed sitting next to the other guy. And then we look at each other and we realize, Oh my fucking gosh. <laughs> like, we're like this is about to be something and i'm like oh we should go back to the bar and, and drink some more and they're like oh let's smoke more weed and one of the guys puts his arms around me and i'm just like oh my god this is this is this is not going well and then jared starts talking about how he doesn't like to smoke weed sometimes he likes to sniff uh kid what is that uh the shit you give cats catnip catnip he's like oh one time i got really hot of catnip and what does it do like lie around on the floor and knock a ball of string around I don't know. <laughs> he says something like that and then the guys start getting really weirded out so i'm like oh yeah me too oh we do catnip together all the time and then the guys are just like oh my god oh, catnip is not gonna get you high i don't think it does but it weirded them out when he said it so i just jumped on board and started talking about catnip being awesome too it's just a way to get out of there just a way to get out of the room because the guys were getting handsy and so we're just getting the fuck out of there because were we, they hot i don't uh, it's an old liquor salesman i don't know just saying what do you say liquors that you like work at a liquor store no like these, Look, you these get guys free were booze? liquor execs like, oh oh they were like working for you yeah, like the whole shit. the whole way we got sucked into hanging out with them was they kept telling us they wanted to, to sponsor a tour of us oh okay so they're totally these guys like, misog- are smart yeah, yeah they're totally misogynist our egos like we're gonna do like you know uh a Jose Cuervo, other things too. like tour or whatever with you right <laughs> and they keep pumping us full of free liquor they take us back to their room for weed and then they start like you know like sitting on the bed next Seduce to us the art of seduction yeah the guess. art of seduction by weirdo liquor guys and then that's when we just started talking about catnip to get the guys to leave us the fuck alone <laughs> telling you lies telling us friend lies i think uh tell me lies tell me sweet little if we're lies. being honest i said that just so i can uh play that song it's been in my fucking head all day Oh, there you go. That's the hilarious Joe Rains. Find him on Facebook. His name is Joe Rains. R A I N E S. So now it is time to go into the main episode for today. This is a conversation that we had with our good friend Scott Howard. You can find him on Twitter at the best is Scott. This is from March of 2015. So give it a listen. And, uh, you know, if you like the show, tell your friends we're back. So we'll have new episodes coming out very soon so uh stay tuned here's scott howard welcome to the goods from the woods my name is rivers langley i'm pat riley this is a good night man of the hour tower of power too sweet of a sour and joining us today 
Scott Howard. Yeah. <laughs> like the character in Teen Wolf. <laughs> Except not the MTV one, because my name's not cool enough for MTV. Wait, Fucking... was, the ca- was Michael J. Fox's name Scott Howard? Yeah. Wow. What's the name of the character on the MTV version? Because I imagine him having a name like Preston Blake something or, no- something or another or something like Preston that. Preston Blake. Preston Blake. I didn't know there was yeah, ever Preston a... Preston Blake the werewolf. There yeah. Was MTV... Polo is what he trains yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was an MTV Three of version of Teen Wolf? Yeah. When was this? <laughs> it might still be on. It's on. Yeah, sure. it's currently oh, on. Oh, it's nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I don't remember that from back then. And it's not a, really a comedy. It's more of a... Violent. Yeah, children's grim and gritty. Show. Yeah. Well, one would think that's what actual teenage werewolfism would be like, can't we? Yeah, te- the film just explores the fun side. Yeah. yeah. Not the, the fun oh, side of lycanthropy. The, the basketball yeah. side. <laughs> not yeah. the bestial side yeah. of you wanting to rip someone's heart out. It's kind of, uh, it, and it's not the fun side of ripping someone's heart out like Werewolves of London covers. It's like that no, kind no. of angsty teen. Well, that's ripping lungs out. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. You can always tell if it's a good cover by if the guy actually goes, draw blood! <laughs> and they start to do the little solo at the end. But so, Scott, just uh, you just relocated uh, to L.A. from Alabama. Mm-hmm. How, how is the, uh, how is the, the transition uh, going? Uh, it's going pretty well. I live in Montebello, which people keep telling me is not L.A. <laughs> which what I is know when I was looking yeah, for places. I don't know what the just, hell that is. I thought you lived in Italy or something like that. It's like right next to Monterey Park. It's due east of downtown. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's uh, East L.A. You know, okay, you've so seen Fast and Furious, right? Okay, well, yeah. Like Cheech, yeah, remember that born in East L.A.? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that Cheech Marin solo joint. So is it is it past Alhambra or is it before Alhambra? I think it's south, but it's roughly like the same place. Oh, okay. Latitudinally? Yeah, longitudinally. Longitudinally. So it's longitudinally yeah, east of Alhambra. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, the fun so of now geography. you know exactly where it is. Better than Triple A, right here. Right. What, and what's your uh, what's your living uh, like your neighborhood situation like? It's actually not that bad. Every uh, except every Sunday we have this guy who uh, from like eight to noon just keeps shouting, "I love it." For four fucking hours, <laughs> I love it. And occasionally, Wait, is this people, rivers? <laughs> occasionally people will echo back at him, and he'll like echo back. To he's them. like a town character. Yeah, he's like a mockingbird. And then we have uh, <laughs> we have a cleaning lady who's just got her cart, and she's got a bicycle horn, and she just pushes the cart around and honks it in case you want her to come in and clean your house. <laughs> That, that sounds great. Yeah, I that's cheaper than the two maids van that's always parked outside my place. Yeah, I mean, I forty nine dollars. That's not bad either. Shit, I kind of want to. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know how much she is. Uh, we, oh, okay. We think it's some kind of scam. Which... Well, she might be a vampire. You know, a vampire can't get in unless or a you invite werewolf. them in, right? <laughs> oh, you're or a werewolf. Shit, invite. That's right. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have to invite in a vampire? A cleaner? That's... A yeah, but, well, that's the thing, you know, Housekeeper. that'd be a good uh, good gig for a vampire, yeah, would be a cleaning if, woman. Okay, so if you technically don't say, yeah, come on in, then... Then uh, vampires it's, listen, then it's, it's like, rivers. yeah, you can clean the house, but as long as you don't say it specifically, they're just there. Right, yeah, exactly, okay. they're just hanging out. I don't know, it's still better that we, the one that we've got, we've now got who, uh, what we refer to as the weeping widow, mm-hmm. and it's just this woman who all night is just going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> All goddamn night, and it's right next to Andrew Lopez's room. <laughs> I can still. Here's the thing. So, like, I live downstairs, and next door, the apartment next door has a bunch of comedians into it. It's an identical layout, and Andrew and I both have the same room, but like two apartments, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so he's got the weeping widow on his side. So all night he just hears. <laughs> so is she a live person? She's like, uh, we think she's this very old woman who right. just screams all night. No. <laughs> so she's not a ghost? We, we don't know. I mean, that, that's Christ. based on what we can hear. We think it's it's got to be either a ghost or a very old lady who's just screaming all In night. terminal pain <laughs> I mean, or something. What one would have to assume. And then on my side, I've got a baby who just goes... Like this, this makes this insane laughing noise all night. So we've got in stereo two two insane insane people uh, on different a- the and different a- uh, sides of the age spectrum. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this is why I live on the on the west side and sleep during the day. <laughs> yeah, we we have a lot of Asian neighbors, and the way our balcony's set up, it's right next to somebody's bedroom. So I, I'm not going to do like a racist accent. But yeah. me and Brent were outside, like just talking at midnight one night, and this lady peeks through a window and says, "Maybe you talk later." <laughs> like, 
<laughs> we're like, okay, that's fair enough. Oh no, we I, I've gone outside before and then talking to Lopez or whoever on the patio, mm-hmm. and the lady uh, on the on the top will like rip the window open and just go, the baby is sleeping. <laughs> I'm like, she's up now. <laughs> God damn it! Does she have a swastika burned into her forehead? <laughs> I guess I did just do a German yeah. voice. I don't know why. Well, they wouldn't let him do a Chinese one. That's, it, That's why she has bangs to hide it. To hide the mark the inglorious <laughs> bastards gave her. For a second there, I thought, you know, when you were going with that, I thought you were going in the direction of she was in, like, the Manson family or something like that. Yeah. And the baby is something very symbolic. There was know? a lot of good-looking women in the Manson yeah, family. Yeah, he had charisma. Yeah. He was kind of a weird rock star. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, that's like... Well, he was a legit rock star. He was hanging out with uh, yeah, well, I think boys. boys and whatnot. Well, I think star is a very relative term. I mean, have you heard sense. his song? Well, he's famous. Have you heard Look at Your Game Girl? Look at you. I know Kim. Garbage Dump. Death oh, Girl. Garbage Dump. I, I think, I don't know, have we talked about how much I love Garbage Dump? We should have done that on Desert Island Discs. Oh, man. Must yeah. have been that gas leak, couldn't remember it. Garbage Dump. Do you know what I'm talking about? Charles Manson has a song called Garbage Dump. Mm-hmm. Oh, Garbage Dump. Oh, Garbage Dump. Why are you called a Garbage Dump? Oh, garbage dump, oh, garbage dump. Wow, you call a garbage dump. It's kind of like a Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's about yeah. a garbage Except dump. Except a guy with no tree goes to a <laughs> landfill. Yeah. And then I think the, the second course is you could feed the world with my garbage dump. <laughs> It, uh, so it's about, works, it's, Charles. It's really an early, uh, you know, it's a, it's an early anthem for freeganism. Mm. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Was that one covered by Guns N' Roses too? No, that one didn't make it out of uh, Lie, the Love and Terror Cult, which is the name of the record. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, so there is a rumor that he wrote songs for Guns N' Roses, or has that been substantiated? No, no. They covered it. The Guns yeah, they, N' Roses covered uh, his song. But they were, they were like pen pals, too, weren't they? He and Axl Rose? Oh, really? That's what I wow. could have I mean, fucking I wouldn't, sworn. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I, know, they, I think Axl Rose maybe even visited him in prison. <laughs> Jesus. So Ugh. he's to blame for the spaghetti incident. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Charles Man- Manson made me do it. Yeah, yeah I just remember uh, the spaghetti incident being alongside R.E.M.'s Monster as the CD that you always saw multiple copies of at the UCD store. Yeah, and Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba, yeah. Those three are like the triple Wait, crown. That album bothered me because I actually, it's, it's not one on, but I actually can't stand spaghetti. So the cover of that album <laughs> bothered me a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it was like spaghetti O's kind of. So it wasn't yeah, even so it good was spaghetti. Orange yeah. and everything. Yeah. I mean, the strings. What yeah. is it that bothers you about spaghetti? I, it's, it's, everybody thinks it's weird. I, just, I can't stand it. The, the texture is disgusting. Everything about it. I don't like the smell. I don't like the look. I don't like the taste. I think it's the worst thing I've invented. Wow. Is it the is it the noodles themselves or when it's mixed with marinara sauce that it really... I like marinara sauce, mozzarella sticks. I love noodles and any kind of Asian disc, but I, I do not like spaghetti. Everything about it just grosses me the hell out. What about just Italians? I love Italians. I just don't like their food that much. Well, no, I like their pizza. You understand? <laughs> I like Gino uh, Lola Gabrigida there. And uh, uh, all they have great uh, Italian actresses that was good looking. You know, say, I like the women, but I don't like spaghetti. What can I tell you? What about like ravioli? Don't like that either. I don't like no oh. pasta at all. No pasta at all. Wow. Yeah, so you ever noticed this? You can't really see it on the radio, but you never notice you never see Mr. Goodnight eating pasta. I don't like <laughs> I, it. I have noticed that. Yeah, and with a mustache well. like that, I can just imagine just you eating tons of spaghetti. Yeah, it'd be like a lady in the tramp or something like that, but I just I don't like it. <laughs> and the only photos are blurry, like that Bigfoot picture. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, here he is eating pasta. I don't think that's him. It's yeah, a no, guy so, in a Mr. Goodnight suit. Yeah, because Bigfoot is real, but Mr. Goodnight eating pasta is something you ain't never gonna find. Find, no matter where you go in the Pacific Northwest or nowhere. <laughs> okay, so Bigfoot. What about a Wendigo? Have you heard of those? Yeah, but Wendigo bothers me because people nowadays they think Wendigo is like the Yeti or Bigfoot, mm-hmm. but Wendigo was actually just a nature spirit. It was like a, 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 a feeling that you get alone in the woods. It wasn't a tangible thing. At some point, Wendigo got confused. With 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 Bigfoot, and now you see Wendigo, and they make him like a white Bigfoot or whatever. But Wendigo used to be not a substantial thing like that. It was more like a ghost or even like a cannibalistic. Yeah, it's tied in with something. cannibalism. Yeah. It's like if you eat 
someone, you'll become a Wendigo. Yeah. And then you'll encourage other people to eat people. But now... It's you like a pyramid that, scheme. You ever see that movie that was like that? <laughs> It was a movie about that. It was called, I don't remember what it was called. Oh, uh, Ravenous. Yeah, it was in an army base in like the 1840s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That movie was all right. But that was more accurate depiction of Wendigo than you see nowadays in like Shadow Run or whatever. Well, that's probably not nowadays, but it's nowadays as far as Good Night's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, the point is he's not a big foot. He is a, some kind of spirit or something that makes you eat people, which is totally different. <laughs> How's the, how's the job hunt going? I work for a company called Blank that raises money for... You can say it. I'll bleep it out. Okay. I work for... I work I for... It was called Blank. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I Blank. raise money for liberal nonprofits, and it just makes me want to vote Republican across the board <laughs> for the next election. Yeah. I, I actually also work for... Mm-hmm. Are they connected to Perg? Uh, probably. Perg sounds like like an evil alien overlord <laughs> start a horrible fucking company like this and yeah. it's just like bothering people constantly yeah. like uh I had to call uh, – one day I was calling for the Democratic National Committee, and I got two people in a row who, who were terminally ill. Oh, Jesus. And then later that day I got <laughs> was a lady. one of them going, ah! <laughs> well, were they still going to be alive by election time? <laughs> uh, I, I decided not to press for that information. Hi, this is Scott from <laughs> – uh, if you're are, still alive, are in you going to be alive in yeah. November 2016? We need your vote. Are you going to make it more than a month into the next president? <laughs> <laughs> so These things have, matter. You having uh, to do this stuff by telephone? You can't yeah. vote oh, absentee. That's, that's the worst. From the, <laughs> it's pretty terrible. Can you vote absentee from beyond the grave? I, I would think that be Ooh. where absenteeism started. That's, that's a, a yeah. dead man. I'm not from Chicago, so I don't know about uh, yeah. such things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every year, every year they get tons of votes for Eugene V. Debs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the dead socialists show up every year. Yeah, the, the specter demographics always voting for these. <laughs> all those Harold Stanson votes, you know. Yeah. Yep. All these Civil War dead are voting for more hacksaws in our <laughs> hospitals. They're voting for Grant again. You know, so G A R stands for generally all Republicans. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, I've been doing that. I'm still technically employed by them, even though yeah, I have I think really, I am, too. Yeah, I haven't really been going in, and I don't know if they fire people. No, I I, I worked there right when I moved here. Mm-hmm. I went. I worked at Telefunds. Because telephone. it's a really easy job to get. Yeah, it's on Craigslist. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah I, could, I could call. And, and you it, sit in a... Oh, my God. The people there who are good at it, oh, yeah, the they're, weirdest they're, people. They're sociopaths, and yeah. they're so happy about it. I'm starting to think about giving them a call. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> I've read some of the reviews online, and they say that uh, payday might as well be called blowjob day because apparently there are like people there who just offer blowjobs on payday for money. Which, All right, wow. I'm definitely yeah, giving them a call. I, I have not been offered a blowjob yet, <laughs> but it talks what are about you doing like wrong? I should go pick up my paycheck. I have no idea. It, it's like homeless people. <laughs> and I go with drug you. Addicts. I was going to say I, I still technically should have about. Forty-five dollars sitting there. To- Man, I want to get. Where is this? Is this on the west side? It's, in, be- it's, it's in Koreatown. Koreatown. It's the the. Well, yeah, I'll go over there for BG. I mean, I've done it anyway. I mean, I'll, I'll go there and get paid. I get paid this time. You yeah. Because usually, if I go there and I give them money, they're like, "This is ridiculous. I should be paying you." But this sounds like it's even better. Well, that's the thing. You could go to the massage place across the street, spend the money, then go back across the street, get paid more, get another. Uh, you know job and then go around and it'd be a perfect circle check to the massage parlor it's a perfect circle yeah of blowjobs and money yeah and it's this really weird like it's That's super exactly dirty what I'm looking for in life <laughs> and like they, they have so many dirty people that work there that uh they were fucking up the kitchen and instead of cleaning it and calling those people out they just turned the kitchen into storage oh. so there's just a bunch of shelves in there oh, now now, now, now then this will ta- this only take a second and you cut this part out what's with the blowjobs i don't understand that. <laughs> i i just looked up reviews through google for the company and that's it what was, it said what, like, are they expecting some of you pay or something I, I would assume it's not a courtesy they were thing. highly rated on suckit.org yeah. <laughs> well you never know I'm like, hell, man, if fallacious women work, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm definitely going to check this out. That's such an underutilized word, fallacious. It's, it's a real motley crew because anybody can do the job, but you have to have a certain mindset to be able to do it comfortably. Like Mick Mars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you have to, part of your like emotional makeup has to be fucked up because you're hassling people constantly. But oh, I'd hate it, but for money and, you know... Free blow jobs. I mean, hell, yeah. sign me up. Yeah. And people act like they're doing the person they're calling a favor when you're just annoying them at home. Basically, say you gave fifty dollars to like the Democratic National Committee. When you call, you start off by asking them for a hundred dollars. Like oh, you double, yeah. and yeah. you have yeah. to do that ask ladder bullshit. Yeah, you have to double. This what kind initially... of job sounds like it should come with a blow job. Oh my god, it does it's not the worst. Sound yeah, like it's fun. it yeah. should come with a bullet. Because a lot of a lot of nonprofits are doing that now. Because my wife got like a letter from. Uh, the ASPCA because she gives money to the ASPCA or she gives money to the ASPCA every year. Yeah, and they sent her a letter that was like really belligerent. Like on the front of the envelope, it was just like very. Well, their commercials are also very belligerent. Yeah, <laughs> true. But it's just like they were like this dog is dying. What are you doing? Yeah, it was like a shakedown. I will remember you. <laughs> the dogs are dying, <laughs> and you're being a piece of shit. Will you remember? There's me? no greater soundtrack to dying dogs. <laughs> A lot of commercials should be a guy with a revolver with one bullet that he just spins and clicks on a dog. (laughs) And he adds more bullets as the commercial goes on. (laughs) I apologize. It's directed by Michael Cimino. (laughs) You can get Christopher Walken to do it. it He was great in Jersey Boys, by the way. I don't know if I'm going to see that, but he was great in it. (laughs) Just get him really. Yeah, that. I've not seen Jersey Boys. Is that the, that's the Clint Eastwood dance movie. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a Clint Frankie, Eastwood doesn't dance. Frankie Valli. That's a shame. Does he do the music? No, I think Frankie Valli. Sherry, <laughs> Sherry baby. You should, yeah, you should just put in the song uh, from the end of Grand Torito. Yeah. <laughs> Old gr- so wait, walk like, like a man. Walk like, yeah. <laughs> walk walk like what a man. man. Like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Late December, back in 63. <laughs> oh, did he kill a guy? <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> So wait, your 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 wife, your wife, Pat, your wife. No, I mean it was just like a very belligerent. Oh, they're like, like that. I sent money to PBS, and next day, thing I know, Big Bird comes to my house, doesn't shake me down for more cash. <laughs> That's why they send Big Bird because he's muscle. Yeah. 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 If you better, if you, if you, you be- don't want that yeah. peak up your ass, so you you end up forking <laughs> over all your dough. Well, the original design of Big Bird had rooster spurs, so he could cut people. Yeah. Was threatening. <laughs> Them Sesame Street cockfights. You look the hell out. Yeah, Jim Henson was doing a lot of coke, and he owed some people some money. So. <laughs> it's like, man, if I had that Big Bird here, he'd labyrinth. sell it. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy pissing in a fountain. It's great. <laughs> yeah, guy and, rides a dog that doesn't want to be ridden. And the magic dance is such a great song. Too. Dance, baby, dance. It's so good. The power of the voodoo. Yeah. And baby said... Did you have to make a phone call for the ASPCA? Yeah, when I called a lady for the ASPCA, she couldn't give money, and she just started talking about how much she loved animals and all her pets, and then she started crying. So, uh, yeah, that night I just bought a bunch of chicken fingers and some ice cream and went home and sat in a dark corner. I felt terrible about myself. A little bit, yeah. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, the the one – when I say I worked there, I worked there for one day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm, no, nah, I just went back to my car. I was like, I'll just – This is a ground for payday, Rose. I know. Well, <laughs> hey, I never picked up that check. So like I said, there's still $45 waiting on me probably. And you'll so, still have $35 when it's over. Yeah, so exactly. There you go. Call, <laughs> exactly. Call, call me to, to go with you on that day. It will go. Yeah. We'll get you, in the line. You could easily get a job there. Well, I just want the the only job I want there is the, the blow <laughs> <laughs> um, You can go into their kitchen storage room, and they'll take care of you. Poor Pat. He thinks it's... <laughs> add some more stains. He thinks it's, like, he's stuck in the middle of, of, of like, like Howard Stern or something. Yeah. yeah. The, only, the only notable thing that happened the day I was working there is I did call Renee Zellweger. <laughs> oh, really? On behalf of the National Organization for Women. Because the, well, were they were they branching out of something? Here's the thing. Like, all right. So basically, here's how the here's how it works. First of all, they have the oldest equipment you can possibly imagine. The screens are black with orange letters. Yeah, it's like, like pre MS DOS. 
It's crazy. Actually, how old I think I'd is. enjoy that too. And uh, and then you just I'd have be like, this... find like a computer I know how to use. I know you can play Math Blaster <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> while you work. Does this have Terrapin logo? <laughs> but it's got this phone. And you put on the headset, and then you take the phone off the hook. And the second you take the phone off the hook, it starts dialing just um, automatically. So you don't have to dial any numbers. You just sit there, and then it'll come up, and it'll go, you know, somebody will answer. And you have to read the script. And so you'll be like, hi, this is Rivers. I'm calling on behalf of the National Organization for Women. Uh, You know, Republicans are trying to take you away and put you in a camp. Uh, (laughs) You know, like you have to read in this, like, horrifying thing. And then ask for money, and then most of the time the response you get is "fuck off," and they hang up, or they just immediately hang up. So that's like normally what you get. But wouldn't you if you somebody called up and started reading a script? Yes, of course. No, I, just, I don't. That's the, that was my problem with the job. Is like as soon as you would hang up, I'm like, yeah, I don't blame you. I would have immediately hung up. I, yeah, I wouldn't answer a number I didn't recognize. Right, because that's just going to be junk. I usually get. See, I've never gotten the people, but you know, since I'm, they don't say they're from. Yeah, no, but I mean, you know, I don't get. They'll say the, they're from like they they they'll. Say I don't even get people. No. You yeah. So robots. for when yeah, I get the ro- the pre recorded message. So I yeah. get this like weird call from Oklahoma. Yeah. And I'm just like, what what is this? And I swipe it to answer it, and it's like this really we- always this really bad recording that seems like it was recorded on like a Fisher Price tape deck. Yeah. And it's like some weird like. Guy with like sounds like T one thousand, just like you know, weird authoritative voice, and just going on like, and there's that little like awkward silence at the beginning because the tape, I guess, is looping. I, I back. get one of them every month from CVS to remind me to pick up my prescription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they even tell you like, don't stop talking until you ask for money. It's yeah. fucking horrific. And if people argue with you, they have like bullet points. Like, I was calling for the Democratic National Committee, and one of the, like, common objections is, I don't like the way the Democratic National Committee abandoned the president. So they give you this shitty little talking point thing, and the response to that is, I understand. The truth is, we never abandoned the president. And you're supposed to just tell this to <laughs> another this like adult. Is like a wrestling promo? Or is like <laughs> Rollins? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to explain why you're going to be the Intercontinental Champion <laughs> to a total stranger. <laughs> Number one, yeah. he ain't shit. Number two, <laughs> yeah, God, they monitor yeah, you're nothing you without your authority, cronies. I got called out on using a script, and a guy was like, "Yeah, uh, that's still a script. That's just insulting." It's like, well, what the fuck do you expect? Nobody gives a shit well, what do you they, think. They monitor your phone calls. Oh that? yeah, I had some old ghoul fucking hassle me because <laughs> I was like. Somebody told me she was sick, and I started by asking her for less money than what was in the system. So this old lady had to come up to me and, like, settle my hash and explain that to me and, like, say, you're getting paid to ask for money. And I'm just like, Ugh, God, how can you do this? Yeah. Is the money good on this thing? Uh, people get commission. I forget how it works because they don't explain it well because that's not what they do and they have a high turnover. But uh, it's basically minimum wage, and then you get extra money according to how much donations you get. And they also – they call the donations gifts. So you hear people talking about like, oh, I got a gift of $100. It's like – it's like, not like, a gift. Like, like you called TV somebody and bought – yeah. yeah. You fucking gift. bothered somebody until they gave you money. Yeah, it's kind of like – it's the same principle as the clipboard people, but you do it over over the phone. Yeah, mm. but the yeah. clipboard, at least you get that open air and everything. And, you know, maybe you get to know what the women look like before you hit on them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just, I'm like, just flat, like imagining Goodnight doing this job. It reminds me of that episode of Beavis and Butthead where they try and sell magazine subscriptions. I, I, I think I might have to. I think I might have to go get this job, and then we'll talk about my experience, my two weeks. There. You should if do I it for a week. Long. I think that I, would be I, fucking I hilarious. If I'd make enough money just to get a little bit of money, I'd do. It for Daddy, me. would you like to buy something gross? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not like I'm selling spaghetti. You understand? They practically sell themselves. Oh, honey, well, you, mean, you, just, you sound just, good. You sound good. Would you like to donate? To the National Organization of Women, Bob? I will ask them if, if they don't if they don't want to donate. I just say I was like, okay, that's fine, honey. You like sex at cowboys and mustaches? <laughs> I honestly you don't want to give money to the Democrat National Committee. Anyway, I'm just talking about sex at cowboys and mustaches. Yeah, the ASPCA to... finds a lot of homes for sex at cowboys. It'd with be mustaches. like phone sex that calls you. That's the best part of it. Yeah, I, if, if yeah, I let, let's work there. Let, let's try one. All right, so sell me on the ASPCA. Hello. Do you all like animals? 
Uh, yeah, I do. I do like animals. Yeah, me too. I, I, you know, I like animals so much that you know, what, what would you do if you saw someone who's just beating up animals and just doing God, I'd mean be, things to animals? I'd be horrified. Wouldn't you like to go down there and uh, I don't like to use kind of language for that, but wouldn't you like to go down there and just fuck them up? Yeah, I would. But there's a way you can fuck them up. Really? And that's by giving money now, then. To the ASPCA. Oh God! How much? Well, how much you want to give? <laughs> I, I guess I have a I have hundred and fifty dollars I could give. I, that sounds. Uh, we'll take one hundred fifty dollars. We'll send you a nice Sarah McLaughlin CD. <laughs> oh, you know, I love Sarah I McLaughlin. Admit, can, I, can I get personal with you? You, I'm, <laughs> you, I'm really attracted to you because of <laughs> really? your love for animals. I mean, not I do love you know, animals. Physical love. I like animals too. What are you doing Thursday? Uh, uh, nothing. My, my, my schedule's open. <laughs> oh, still's mine. Well, what else is open, huh? I got your address, right? I got your address. I've already got your phone number. How about 8 o'clock? I, come I got your credit United. card number, right? I'll bring you your Sam McLaughlin personally. <laughs> you know, and on top of that, not only do I have the Do you like the song, Adia? I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> not only do I get the opportunity to meet all these women all the time, come payday, you understand? I'm uh, going home happy. Uh, all right. Uh, how about you could you can handle a, a male caller, but could you a uh, female caller? But yeah. could you handle a male caller? Yeah, I can, I can okay, handle one. Do you want to do one for uh, uh, for this or the or the Sierra Club? Which one? The Sierra Club. The Sierra Club. What is that like? Sierra Games. Remember King's Quest and all that. Shit? <laughs> no, no. I Sierra, love that. Shit. Sierra Club. Uh, they're like uh, the uh, you know they donate money to to uh, John environmental Muir protection thing. and stuff like that. The John Muir Society. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Y'all ever like just go out with boys? Just you know, you get some gun, get some beer. Who is so, this? D- this is Mr. Goodnight calling for the Sierra Club. I'm eating dinner right now. What? 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 What y'all eating? You... What y'all eating? Venison? Did you hunt it yourself? <laughs> Did no. You, did you hunt your own venison? Why not? What, 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 Why not? What? Did you not hunt your own venison because the, the, the woods and things are disappearing? Because these corporations are taking away all our nice lands that we can go out and hunt? So you can have some venison instead of having to eat canned Russian food made by the little hamburger hand man that you see on TV. Y'all should give some money to the Sierra Club so we can have proper wetlands and woods and things and we can go hunting and not have to eat this this. Tommy bullshit. <laughs> uh, I used to go hunting with my father. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Miss him. How much? I miss mine. How much? So I'm money. Daddy. Should I gift? Because I feel that I should do something in his honor. Yeah. Well, what, what? How much you got? I, 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 I have a hundred dollars. Uh, my, my father would really. Yeah. You like to go to the woods? Daddy, yeah. Yo, y'all want to go hunting? No. No, we should go hunting, man. We have a good time. Really? Yeah, let's go hunt, man. Bring some beers. Maybe, you know, smoke a little dubich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go out and <laughs> pull the shit out of some ducks, huh? Do, do y'all, but do, do one last thing, sir. Do y'all have a sister? <laughs> <laughs> Does she like go hunt? <laughs> See, I could make... If they're listening yeah, I over would give, it, yeah, so what is this place called? <laughs> Dolphin, or whatever they're called. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hire me. You know, I'll be knee deep in it. This will be good stuff. <laughs> and, See, I, and I don't even like talking on the phone. Yeah, I know we've been we've been bleeping out the name, but you just go to Craigslist and just type you'll in. You'll find like, it fast you know, enough. They put in under every heading. They put under yeah. every single yeah, policy I've never seen job. It, I always go straight to casual encounters. They'll put so. it under writing, and it'll be like <laughs> writers love our easy hours or shit like that. When I'm calling you. You see, when I went out of college, I had trouble finding a job because I didn't do internships and I was just under the thought process that like you get the degree and then you get a job afterwards and that's now how it works. Right. Um, and I remember seeing a heading on Craigslist that was like policy jobs. And I was like, Hey, that's pretty cool. I could work at the Capitol, you know, yeah. maybe, you know, run some bills around, go to Mary Max Tea Room, eat some lunch with, you know, the Looks John, you know, yeah, with Kwanzaa Hall John or Lewis. somebody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I went into this room and it was like, it was in a very nice, it was in Midtown. It's a really nice building. And I went in there and there were just like 
posters that were like on the wall with like tacks. It was like very like almost like a dorm room, and they weren't straight or anything like that. And they were, were all they like Farrah Fawcett. No, and it wasn't like you know that that you know the the Pink Floyd album covers with painted the, on women's backs. Yeah, yeah no, or, I, I like that one too. Or you I know, I don't like Pink Floyd, but I like the album cover. They they very innocuous, you know, almost yeah. like kind of just like a. Did they have a cat like falling out of a tree and it says "Keep it up"? Or yes, like that? things like that. Things like that, motivational posters, and they were just like. So I was just like, "What is this?" And I wore a suit, and everybody in there was like wearing cutoffs and stuff like that. And I was just like, <laughs> felt a little bit unsure. And then I went in. We're like, it was for, it was for. Um, is that a person? <laughs> and it's a acronym. And they were just, they basically said it was the like the thing, but they would put you in a van and drop you off in a neighborhood and make you go door to door doing that stuff. Oh my God. And they wouldn't pick you up until you hit every house. And they had like quotas and things like that, you know, where it was just like you had to make some sort of minimum amount and they were dropping you off in like neighborhoods in like Henry County and Clayton County. Like there's like really God forsaken counties outside the perimeter where all the people like the white flight happened, you know, just like going out to Dunwoody, you know, canvassing for, you know, killer Clinton or something like that. It was like actually that. for progressive. See, that's yeah, it's, it was for progressive issues. And it was just like, this is not like, this is yeah, if you were idea. to drop me off in like Candler Park or something like that, right. that would be fine. Or in Decatur. Yeah. But no, they were they were shooting high. They were like trying to change the hearts and minds of all these people that live out in, you know, <laughs> rural you know, Georgia. Alpharetta. Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all end up taking it? No. Oh, Jesus. No. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, I, I, I actually did the, uh, may I use the bathroom? And I just left. <laughs> you know, didn't even get my parking validated. Yeah, I hate it when girls do that. <laughs> yeah. I spent the whole $15 on that unvalidated parking, you know? Well, it's like, you know, my, my mom had to do the, she did the census in 2000. And that's sort of the same, sort of the same thing. They send you way the hell out of the country and you have to knock on doors and be like, hi, Bill Clinton would like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> well, you know what? I would take that job, but it's, we still got like four years to go. Yeah. Shit. I just think it's funny that people want, like, that people are, you know, on the, on the, there's like those kind of far right people who are like, oh, we don't need the census. Yeah. It's like, what? Like, what? You don't, you hate money? <laughs> yeah. Well, I answered it once just because I usually, my daddy always says, don't ever let them know anything. But I actually, <laughs> I actually answered it once because uh, I, I, I realized what a, a valuable research tool it was for historians. Yeah, yeah. So that's the only reason I'd, a- I'd answer the census. Hey, America, you've still got time. It's not too late. That's right. Remember, it's not too late. It's not too late to help show where your community needs funds for jobs, schools, health care, and more. It's not too late. Answer the 1980 census. And remember, all your answers are kept confidential by law. Answer the census. We're counting on you. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about uh about superheroes, shit like that. Okay. <laughs> we can, excellent Why transition. Not? I love that. It took us a like half hour to get yeah, I know. Superheroes. Yeah, it was a, yeah, 40, damn, 45 minutes to get In to the world topic. without heroes. <laughs> world without heroes. <laughs> like a... World without sun. <laughs> I was I was referencing that uh, um, the Chad Kroger dude from Saliva song from uh, oh the Spider Man Two soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, oh I hero. He doing, yeah. I thought he was doing World Without Heroes by Kiss from. Don't they say the in a World Without Heroes as well? Maybe. In that song? Yeah, that's the song. World Without Heroes. No, not the Kiss song. The the the, the, the Nickelback. The can they say that a hero can save? That, that's <laughs> all I remember. I a hero know. can save. The only thing I remember about that Spidey Man movie, other than in fact Zeus was up in it, I think, was that there was one scene where they in the rain, and it's either Reese Witherspoon or Kirsten Dunst, whichever name she had in that movie, didn't have no bra on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that when they do the upside down kiss. Yeah, and she didn't have bra on. <laughs> So, yeah, Spidey used his webbing to yank it right off. Yeah, that's what I'd do yeah, if strange. I had superpowers. Yeah, which would really just hurt her. They, I mean, they were pushing for that. Break P- her spine. They were pushing to go to that PG-13 level, yeah. you know, because they were trying to get that Oscar. Also, bonus. it was right Spider after. nips up in there. Also, you know? it was right after 9-11, you know. <laughs> 
Actually, America didn't... wasn't really. Oh yeah, that's why all the New Yorkers on the bridge throw stuff at the Green Goblin. Yeah, yeah. like your nine eleven feel good moment. I, well, hate, I hated that part. They should have had them all running all the way and then throwing stuff at an Arab or something because that would have been a real New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, they the yell at him and they do like Spider Man's trying to save these kids. And it's like, yeah, he's the one who endangered the kids. <laughs> you don't have to explain that to him. But didn't they actually have to re-edit that movie because wasn't the World Trade yeah, Center they, in they it did. originally? Yeah, it was in the trailer because there was like uh, he did a web between the two Trade Center towers. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they changed that to the thing where he's like on top of, I guess it's the Empire State Building, but for some reason the Empire State Building has the biggest American flag ever on top yeah, of it. They, they should have changed it to the web caught the two planes that hit the Toy <laughs> They just bounced back. <laughs> yeah. Like Spidey really saved the day. Right, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, where was Spider -Man, he when there's this no shit <laughs> Seriously, where are they when this shit goes down? Well, it was pretty early. Well, it happened in the Marvel Universe, too, and it probably happened in the DC one. Spider-Man didn't stop it. Superman didn't stop it. All these superheroes should have been able to stop it, but they couldn't. Yeah, 9-11 made Doctor Doom cry. And a lot I know, of people and he's, really tried, to do, about he's that. tried to do more evil things than that. Yeah, the best <laughs> explanation I ever heard of that was he cried because he didn't think of it first. <laughs> <laughs> that is Dr. Doob. <laughs> oh, my God. I used awesome. to go to the Ladvarian Club and eat the Kugali and things like that. It was wonderful. They had a little cafeteria and everything. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy Ladvarian cuisine. <laughs> Is that what Doctor Doom is Latveria? Yeah, well, uh, Doctor Doom's the monarch of the fictional country of Latveria. Where oh, is Latveria? It's in Europe. Somewhere. Yeah, it's like Balkan. Is it, is it a former like Soviet state? I hope not. Like, I think it's kind of like Soviet Russians. German. Ah, uh, so it's kind of like uh, gypsy, -ish. like the Czech Republic, like maybe. Romania. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Latvia. Yeah, because Doctor Doom's a gypsy. Oh, okay. Oh, so he's yeah. basically Ceausescu. You can tell yeah. because he's he's got like a tambourine with him everywhere as he goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and bells on his shoes. Yeah, he always tries to get into songs where tambourines don't go. Yeah, you see, you can't see it with the, with a cow, but there's a little yeah. ear ring. Well, he's got, on he's got his rings neck. on his fingers and bells on his shoes. Scarlet Begonia's in Touch of the Blues. If he had jewelry with his suit of armor, he would make so much noise just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's got a green maternity thing that he wears. Yeah, he's got that tunic that like is cut way high. Yeah. on his legs. It's and like got, right below crotch level. He's got good legs, but I think it's, you know, it's all the, it's the armor it really gives him that look. I like he was my favorite though. I used to have an Oh yeah, I love Doctor Doom. I had the little action figure. It was um Secret Wars, I think, was mm -hmm. the toy. You remember that? Oh, was that the one where it was just the armor with no, like, tunic over it? Yeah, because it was the Iron Man tour with a different head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. But the cool thing was he had a gun, and you could put it on his back, mm -hmm. like on his backpack. That, that was the shit. Yeah, because even though he had a big suit of armor, he still just has a pistol. Yeah. Well, no, he, this one, he came with a rifle. Mm -hmm. it, it was cool as shit. That's got to be cumbersome if you're trying to shoot a rifle with a yeah, suit well, of yeah, armor. Yeah, it doesn't get through the trigger. It's going to clank oh, on yeah. got, You know, he's got good articulation in the fingers. That's oh, true. Okay. He probably thought ahead. He had a, a rocket pack on his back too so i used to make him fly around i, I missed that i missed that little action figure i had that one and uh uh the, remember it's the dc line they had a line called that was superpowers mm. and and i had the penguin action figures and you could squeeze his legs and he, he'd move his arm oh i had that oh, he'd he hit you with his umbrella yeah just like an old lady yeah, yeah. my brother would use it for <laughs> wrestling because he he was the only he it was a sport object well yeah. no my brother would so he's supposed to be like mr fuji with the he's umbrella. a good manager well yeah, yeah he was supposed to be like that or yoko was like a big guy because my brother would wrestle with his gi joes and that was scaled for the gi joes but it was the only guy that had a big fat body type like, mm -hmm. like a monster wrestler <laughs> you could actually do a figure four with gi joes yeah you could that's why the articulation my brother like them better than the wrestling toys because mm -hmm. they were so poseable that you could do all the movies. Yeah, I had like them. a honky tonk man who had the same motion as the umbrella with his guitar. Yeah, who just strikes oh, yeah. somebody with it. Yeah, that was the Hasbro one. Mm -hmm. I used to have. But you remember them big rubber LGN? LJN was a company that made them. Yeah, the big that's giant a brand ones. name. Yeah, like the 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 I had the hillbilly gym was such thick plastic you could bludgeon somebody to death with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The wrestling toys are actually foreign objects. I remember when King Harley Race uh, beat the Junkyard Dog when he hit him over the head with a uh, King Kong Bundy LJN at WrestleMania three. <laughs> Did he? Is yeah. that where Junkyard Dog had to bow to him afterwards? Yeah. <laughs> which was really uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I like the dog because you know. He was a six-time NWA champion. I oh. bow down on two hit bludgeon me with a figure. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. still just a black guy bowing to a white guy. <laughs> yeah, but it is Harley Race. <laughs> okay, that, <laughs> so that is that, true. He's know. got race right in the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and race he's wearing a sports. crown, you know. <laughs> and he had that wonderful curly hair. Yeah. And a big blonde, sideburns. Yeah. yeah. 
It was a little bit on the face side for Harley Race. And it, Harley Race was way too into it, too, because you would see him come down to the ring and he'd just take that cape off with a flourish. And you could tell he was loving this Kang shit. <laughs> <laughs> But Junkyard Dog got it in the end and got Junkyard, the crown. And yeah, JYD Sylvester was his name. Sylvester the dog in this case instead of Sylvester the cat. And when you get yourself started, it's hard to stop. You just go for your partners. You know what? And then you D R A B T A G M C A K E S. Ah, grab them. I met Scott three years ago, maybe four. Three-ish, yeah. Yeah. Doing the bellwether. Oh, Christ, God, it's been longer than that then. Yeah, I think you're the... Uh, four years ago, yeah. Yeah, I think you're the first person who handed me a microphone that wasn't in a stand. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Because I was still such a nervous fucking wreck about doing shows, I hadn't like worked out a good way to take stuff out of a stand. Oh, really? So that was part of my ritual, was I was focused on that, and then you just handed it to me when I got on stage. Oh, really? Oh, Jesus you up. fucking Christ. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but, yeah, and I, I know you always used to uh, appear with the Batman gear a lot. Yeah, big, uh, uh, big Batman fan. Uh, he's my favorite. Even though it's kind of... I know how much of a male, like, empowerment fantasy Batman is, even more so than, like, other superheroes, because yeah. he's rich, and he's, like, doesn't have powers, so he can just dismantle anybody. Right, he's, like, self, self-made. self Completely. Yeah, and, uh, like, going back through those uh, old Burton movies, they're so fucking weird, because, like, if they exist in a vacuum, I kind of like them, but they're not really great Batman movies. There's, like, uh, I think it's the first one where it turns out the Joker killed his parents, so... Yeah. I like that one. It had Prince Mute. Yeah. Get It's yeah. really entertaining, but, like, at the end of it, he gets revenge on the guy who killed his parents. Yeah. So, like, oh, okay, you're done, right? Well, you know, it wasn't made for sequels, and the oh, sequels yeah. bore that out. Yeah, yeah, I actually really like Batman Returns with Danny DeVito as the Penguin. I never cared for that one. Oh, that one God. is... I watch it again. It. It's so goddamn bizarre. Yeah, it's such a fucking weird that I, I It's, like, like that's actually a perfect way to put it. It's not, it's, not a, it's not necessarily the greatest Batman movie, but just as a standalone... What? You know, it's so fucking Danny weird. DeVito as the Penguin could have just, like, worn a tuxedo like Penguin is. They had him all, like, Humpty Dumpty up in <laughs> yeah. the game. He's, he's a legit circus freak. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and Danny DeVito was perfect, too, I thought. And they don't fuck around with, like, Batman has a code against killing. Like, in those, he oh, kills yeah, every but he fucking Yeah, kill no penguins. And I thought that was kind of <laughs> sissy. Well, he turned him against... Uh, yeah, that is true. Him, right? But there's, like, the scene with the fire breather at the beginning who breathes fire at the Batmobile... <laughs> Batman hits a button to make the Batmobile do a 180 just so it can spew <laughs> fire and burn this guy alive. <laughs> it's the most horrible fucking thing. <laughs> you think you, you put that feature in the Batmobile yeah. specifically on Eventually, the off chance. I'm going to have to like, well, use this fire belching somebody's engine going to burn to a man. Fire prepared a prepared for all eventualities <laughs> like that. I mean, that's kind of in the grand tradition of the Adam West one, almost. Oh, well, yeah. Know, Where is, he has, like, the shark repellent. He's yeah. waiting for that one moment. Yeah. Because he knows this is going to look bad at when that <laughs> fire breathes behind yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, I give, give well, what I'll see how you like it. Well, that that would leave that, that makes me think that like maybe reap what you sow. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, well, like, it's got a real. At you least think about all the people you've burned over the years. It, I mean, it, it has me to believe that he was intentionally picking fights with circuses. Oh. <laughs> well, no, it's like just on the off chance. Well, why not? And if you know, a couple of clowns in the balls, why not? Yeah. But yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like that kind of sharper image mentality. Like the guy that like is really into those sharper image things. Like my mama gets them caps. Yeah, and the, he the guy. That buys like the 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 koozie, but it's a glove, and he's just like, I'm gonna need this one time <laughs> just to show how cool I yeah. am. <laughs> so he go, he intentionally buys a ticket to some cold place and go exactly. to a football game. <laughs> yeah. Actually, use disposable income. That's what you do. Right. Yeah. Actually, just brings up something else, kill because you actually just said a few minutes ago that you know you said you were wearing all your Batman gear mm-hmm. when Rivers first met you. Does that mean you had like a batarang? No, just like no Batman t-shirt. 
I, I went yeah. through a phase which it was in my goddamn twenties. It should have been in my teens where I owned like five superhero shirts and I would just rotate them out like a fucking giant. Oh, well, I mean they're they're yeah. cheap at Target. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. I'm wearing a Cactus Jack shirt right now. Mr. Yeah, Good Night's got clowns on his shirt. Well, no, I don't want clowns, you know, Sam. But this was a dollar. Oh, oh, the, those are the masks. Oh. Yeah, it's a dramatic mask. Oh, I, okay. Oh, comedy I'm sorry. drama. It, nice. it was a dollar, you know, at the flea market, and it's ninety degrees today in March. So <laughs> yeah. that's why I saw a guy one time at a trailer park pool where it, with the with the comedy and drama mask tattooed on his back and it was like i didn't know he just kind of wandered over to me he's like i just got this done you know what that means right and i was like uh you know drama comedy the 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 masks of drama he goes nah man look at their look at their smiles up and down life is all about up and down <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where i thought that was an original tattoo and i don't fucking know why oh really yeah <laughs> Like man, I'll get a comedy mask on one shoulder and, and a drama on the other one. Yeah, I thought he was lift gonna, some weights. I thought he was going to ask you if you were down with the clown. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah, I go to McDonald's shit. all the time. Yeah, those What's, juggalo tattoos don't go away. I I uh, I remember watching the uh, the one Batman movie with that was like the really bad one, but it's a blur. Batman like the and Robin? Robin? Yeah, the one with Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, it's Batman and Robin. I was drugged Thurman. to see that in theaters by Gary, who was oh, on yeah, the show stinks. once. It's yeah. fucking terrible. It was a, I remember watching it, but it was like a blur. I slammed my hand in my mom's van door, like getting out of the car to go to see that movie. So I watched that movie in like horrific pain. <laughs> Like my hand was like all fucked up, you know. How, like when you hit your, were you just so pumped that I need, like, I need to get out of the van yeah, now? I was what, so did, stoked. Did you forget about your hand? No, the movie. If the movie that's had been, bad, like, that's what I'm saying. It, yeah, it's not even bad enough to make you forget about your hand. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Mr. Exactly. Freeze puns don't ease the pain of a. What killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> the ice age, <laughs> yeah. which is yeah, actually like, under debate, Mr. Freeze. Oh, I want to know there's millions of years in between. Yeah, between the ice age. But I point out that was a reference to Jurassic Park too, which was out at the same time as that movie. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Oh, they came like, out the same weekend. Yeah, so. And that was their, like, fuck you to Jurassic yeah. Park. And Jurassic Park 2 is not good. Yeah, no, I would like to better. see that also by Jay Geary. I want to see Austin Powers, but he got his way and we had to see that thing. I will actually go out on a limb and say I like Jurassic Park 2. Because really? any Jeff Goldblum, I'm fucking in. Even bad Goldblum movies are still good movies. Uh, he's, That's I mean, he's the best enough, part actually. about it. Yeah, absolutely. The T Rex loose in San Fran or uh, San Diego is pretty awesome. That's amazing, and that's the thing people always like kind of shit on with that movie. They're like, "Why that scene feels tacked on?" I'm like, "Who gives a shit? It's what everybody been wanting to see for you yeah, know dinosaurs the terrorizing yeah. I, I people. Yeah. That whole... should have been the whole goddamn movie. This I would have yeah. put him in Trailer Houston going off personally. The cliff. Houston, <laughs> yeah, San Diego did always seem fucked. And if you watch the movie now, this is just L A. Like it's not mm -hmm. actually San Diego. <laughs> like, well, you know, a lot of movies are gonna be ruined by that. Well, that's true, but like, why? Why not just set it in L.A. Then? By the way, good point. Th this is a slight aside. You remember the movie Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> yes. I haven't looked up the video, but I got into an argument with my roommate. You know when the guy, the like city official, is on the subway car and he throws the guy over the lava by jumping into it himself? Yeah, yeah. Is that at the beginning, or is that, or do they build up to that later in the movie? I think that's the beginning. Is all the stuff with the subway? That's what I thought because it like shows you, oh shit's real. And, well, and it's also because I was like, L.A. has a fucking subway. Like, yeah, heroes are all above us. Like yeah, this guy. They showed they showed us a clip from that movie mm -hmm. uh, in in uh, physical geology. And we had to write a report as to why what they were saying could not be possible. Oh. And they were basically saying that, like, underneath the La Brea tar pits is where, like, the head of, like, the magma was coming up and stuff like that. And the whole point is, like, oh, well, tar is a sedimentary rock. And then you've got – this would be an igneous rock. And – it's not like it's hot tar. You know Did what I mean? you cheat and read the book? No, because we do been, the report. There was a book. The book of Volcano. <laughs> well, you so never the whole know. The movie's untrue. Like, even the part at the end where everybody's covered in ashes and a kid's like, wow, everybody looks the same. <laughs> anyway, I need to go back and watch that. There's actually a long list of movies that are set in yeah, LA. Because that, that I want to Dante's go back and watch. Peak. Yeah. Well, that one's Hawaii or something, right? <laughs> no, that's like uh, Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. Maybe? Like, it's supposed to be like Mount St. Helens yeah. or something. What shit. happens in it? Uh, uh, a volcano Boston. goes off, but it's in a small town this time. There's a lot of volcanoes. <laughs> And small town movies yeah. at one point. I must have missed it, that cinematic craze. And, and the the lake boils, and Grandma gets out of the boat to push it to safety, and then dies because she was in the boiling lake. Yeah, yeah, I remember that part. Those those two scripts came out of the same table at the same Starbucks. Yep. <laughs> 
Yep, and one guy. Probably from the same person. <laughs> no, that's what yeah. it was two guys, and one Shooter. guy was like, I, I think this should be set in a small town. And the other guy's like, I'm setting mine in LA. Fuck you. Fuck or they you. just sat like, there. Ways. Yeah, or they just sat there, and it's like, all right, who's going to make the more ridiculous volcano theme movie? I got stuck with Keanu Reeves. No, it's Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> oh, whatever. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah, Pierce Brosnan's this suave Englishman in this like tiny town who knows about volcanoes for some fucking reason. It's him and Linda Hamilton, I think. Yeah, that's right. Do they? Do they the one acknowledge from Wonder Woman? Oh, that was uh, Linda Blair. That's Linda no, that's Carter. Carter. I get yeah. all my Lindas mixed Linda up. Linda Blair. That's Exorcist. Exorcist. Linda yeah. Carter. And Wonder which Woman. Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. Terminator. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got my Linda's mixed up. Pierce Brosnan was obviously obviously there because he was teaching geology at Evergreen State College, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Grand Canyon College, <laughs> University of Phoenix. He was, collect, he was collecting money for the Sierra Club. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stop a volcano? Anyway, a gigantic cork or something? <laughs> I, I you think, just got to yeah. ride it out, man. You have to get a helicopter and drop it right into the volcano. Baking soda. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, that's how you start it. My bad. You started. Remember that Brady Bunch episode where Peter made the volcano and got all over the girls, and then you're like six years old. That was the greatest sex substitute there was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. I was that a forget? That, that's one of those things. Forget nine eleven. I remember when Peter Brady made the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> that's and the time where you learn to compare lava to a jack. <laughs> that's one of those they don't. I don't think they run that one on Nick at Night. It's a little too, a little too sexy. Mm. But they they catch it on the Brady Brunch on MeTV. Yeah, because it's Brady at the brunch? end of the episode, yeah. and he's got a hard on the entire episode. Oh, you can yeah. tell through his tight seventies so pants. I, I get a hard on every time it's that Johnny Bravo episode. Remember that? Oh yeah, Greg's uh, that alternate song ego, is or bitching. Alter ego. You know yeah. when he does the song, and it's like that's not me. That's mm-hmm. a rope. That song he records is a bitching song. Remember, he's like, I went out to the mountain. Oh yeah, yeah. see Greg Brady. <laughs> he got all the women cruising around in his station wagon with the wood is necking with them, if you will, taking them to the drive-in. Peter Brady was a, a stud. Greg Brady. Greg Brady. That's Peter right. was a loser. Yeah, except for the time he put on a fake mustache. Yeah. <laughs> then he became a stud like Greg. Although now he's the studly one. If you've seen his uh, VH1. Oh, yeah, he married that. Oh, I thought you were going to say You know what? I think shit. he was at the casino I went to a few weeks ago. Oh, I thought ago. you were going to say that cars, if, if you you've will. seen him on the Bosley hair replacement ads. Oh, is that him? Yeah. Was that him or was that Wade Boggs? No, he's in the... <laughs> Tom Bosley. <laughs> No, he's doing the. He's, I wish Tom Bosley. He's was doing the. Head. He went from. Uh, he went from doing. I the, used to have to wear a big pointy cap like David the Gnome. Because <laughs> everybody thought I was bald. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> from beyond the grave. Yeah, like. like <laughs> <laughs> Tom Bosley dead? Yeah, yeah unfortunately yeah. he is. Oh, <laughs> I'm Tom Bosley. And I'm see, dead now. It's like, it's like, remember Lock. those things of the Yule Brenner? <laughs> when you see this on TV, I'm dead. <laughs> Have you ever seen the uh, last episode of David the Gnome? Yeah, when he dies, he turns into yeah, a tree. And they know they're going to die, so they're yeah. just saying goodbye to everyone. It's horrible. Yeah, him <laughs> and his wife, and they're taking their friend. And they're saying goodbye, call. my wife, I love you, and the fox is all running around like, arr, arr, arr. Yeah, Thank God really we sad. have the little koala on afterwards, so, you know, you get over this shit. Wait, just everyone dies? Well, they turn into trees because that's apparently what happens to gnomes when they die. Yeah, they just become trees. Why do they all die at once? I don't know. They don't really explain him it. Him and his wife is just a Well, time. we've been canceled. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. him and his wife, and there's another gnome who can't talk, who they're just taking along with them. A mute Because he can't object. <laughs> they canceled us and Fred Kenner. <laughs> Fred Penner. Fred no. Pen- he looked like a pervert to me, because he would always wear these, uh, these, like, these red sweat Yeah. Pants, like, and it just had that kind of easy access feel to it. <laughs> David the gnome? No, Fred Penner. Oh, okay. Sure. He was a Canadian kid singer with a guitar. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. He'd sing songs like, It's a beautiful day for a home run. And I, what the fuck does that mean, Fred <laughs> But I used to. I had, all yeah, that is, that song, is that song about sports betting or something I don't know, like I that? I think you and Lewis might have read it. But all that shit that was on Fred Penner's place, Elephant Show, David the Gnome, My the Bee, any of that shit was all just waiting, period, until the little koala came on. Yeah, little koala was, was great. Yeah, that was day. the best. With Walter, they remember? had two different koala shows. Yeah, but the second one was called Noozles, and that was for girls. Yeah, so I, did I would not still watch, watch it when shit. I was homesick. I, I would, I would take a dump after a little koala and smoke a cigarette. And I was seven years old, but I was like, I, I am so <laughs> excited by this latest episode, of Little Koala. I'm and and Little Koala was always followed by um, Noozles. 
Oh, okay. Because I I was trying to get the the sequence in order because eventually when it started transitioning into re- Big Kid Nick, it was um, Mr. Wizard was like kind of the transition. I think that point. was a little earlier on because I remember when Count Duckula was okay. actually the trans. Oh my God, those are good days. You got little koala. Well, then you had to take a shit during noozles. But then you get Maya the Bee, which is all right. It's good if you high. And then you get, <laughs> and seven. You get Count Duckula after that. Yeah, and Count, Count Duckula, Duckula was, was good stuff, man. He had to drink tomato juice, and he had the giant nanny. Well, yeah, yeah. And it, because cause he was he was the, the vegetarian, because mm-hmm. the, remember they were supposed to bring him back to life? Well, he's a duck. Well, yeah, he was a vampire Yeah, duck. they fucked up the like <laughs> resurrection somehow. Yeah, instead of blood, oh, well, ducks they used tomato juice yeah. and all that stuff. Ducks, but, yeah. Because yeah. you remember, it started out like it was supposed to be scary. It was mm-hmm. like Castle Duckula. Yeah, which is a weird way to start a kid's show. Like, yeah, yeah, we're raising this dark being. Well, the weird thing was, too, was a spinoff because Count Duckula was one of the bad guys on Danger Mouse. Was he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I They're never all watched like, a lot of Danger Mouse. This is going on and on and on. And we're still talking about Noozles and Count Duckula. <laughs> it was a quality show. <laughs> they were. Look, while it was the best one, no brand new day, time to play with Ruben and his friends. <laughs> I was a little later to the game. I was like, uh, you, you know, missed out. Eureka's Castle. Oh, remember oh, the, do you remember the Eureka's Castle movie? <laughs> they had a Eureka's Castle movie. It's called Don't Touch That Box, and it had Luther Vandross <laughs> oh, in God. it. <laughs> It had Luther Vandross in it. <laughs> Luther, don't touch that box, because you know what they say about Luther. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think Luther Vandross was the shit. Yeah, he's I'm great. What do they say about Luther? He doesn't touch the box. Oh, yeah. oh duh. Okay, shit. <laughs> now you know what was up in there. But it had Magellan. Remember that? Yeah, he was a dragon. Yeah, and Batlet. Like was his name Batlet? Yeah. He always wore that, like, exercise jacket, kind of like Mr. <laughs> 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 it's gonna work out one day. Yeah, one day, one of these days. Was that the same time they were doing the Disney cartoons with like Ducktales and Darkwing yeah, Duck? Yeah, but those weren't on Tailspin. cable; those were syndicated. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I just like Ducktales. I was above yeah, Ducktales that. Ducktales was awesome. Yeah, above the Disney. I was afternoon. above that. I was supermarket sweep. So okay, you know. that's fine. You, know, you <laughs> get to meet because that's. I was that's that weird six year old that would bring a briefcase to fucking first grade. So <laughs> like Gerwin R. Shyster. Yeah. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Uh, Scott, where can people find you online, sir? Uh, my Twitter is the bestest Scott, and uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, the bestest. You ain't on a Facebook, yeah? Uh, yes, uh, Scott Howard. I guess just look me up. I'm a friend of Rivers. Are you on the MySpace? <laughs> uh, I was. I, I guess technically I still am. Oh, boy. I don't have <laughs> a music career. Star? Yeah. Are you? Uh, what's your handle on Prodigy? Oh God. Um, <laughs> I didn't like the albums. Yeah, I think my, <laughs> my like first email was like Razor's Edge. <laughs> too. Yeah. Of course. Was like, there a after three... Scott Hall had notably fucked his life? Oh, up, see, but I, I just thought you were really into that weird Bill Murray movie. <laughs> oh no, not at all. Or, you know, music from Scarface. Oh, shit, you know, my first email was Skinnered. Yeah? So just Skinnered? It was Skinnered. Skinnered at... Was it spelled with the Y's it was and everything? B-U dot edu. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> I did not have no emails. <laughs> I imagine your professors just being like, ah, I was like that even after I did it. I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? Nobody could spell it anyway. I just saw uh, Jason Isbell had a had a tweet that said, "I guess what I'm going for is sort of Leonard Cohen, but spelled L Y N Y R D." I was like, I have, a, I have a student that uh, you get to pick at my school. You get to pick your email address when yeah. you go in, and you Captain Fantasy at Auburn you. I wanted to like I thought about doing something like that, but there was one guy that was usually everybody does their last name or their first name or some combination you know yeah whatever this guy was just big moose master at <laughs> <laughs> dot like that. that sounds like a fred ottman gimmick big moose master <laughs> hell yeah and he was like this little dude you know <laughs> So that is the episode with our friend Scott Howard. That was great to hear. I haven't heard, I haven't listened to that since we recorded it, so it was fun for me too because I'd forgotten most of that stuff. Uh, happy to report Scott has a new job, so uh, don't worry. He's not working at anymore. And uh, also the weeping widow that I mentioned in my apartment, the old woman who just screams all night, I uh, haven't heard her in a while, so she's probably dead. 
So there you go. Uh, yeah, check us out on uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash the goods pod. We're on Twitter at the goods pod. And uh, we have every episode of the show ever at youtube.com slash the goods pod. So tell your friends about the show, rate and review on iTunes. That really helps us out. So thank you for listening. Song of the week this week. Uh, basically, a few months ago, I went through and just downloaded all the records from all the bands that were on Capricorn, which is uh, the Almond Brothers label. And uh, Capricorn sort of screwed everybody out of a lot of money in the late 70s, but they had some good music going and uh, sort of obscure stuff like uh, bands called Cherokee, things like that. Uh, this was uh, one of the one of the best bands I found. Uh, this is off a record from 1976 called Pullin' Together. The band is called Grinder Switch, and, uh, you know, they sound a little bit like the Allman Brothers. But anyway, this song is called Higher Ground, so we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.